Good afternoon, I'm Milton Walker with the Midday News. Special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. Despite caution from the Prime Minister for persons not to resort to panic buying, now that the COVID-19 coronavirus is in Jamaica, the frenzy continues in several parishes. The Health Ministry announced the first imported case yesterday. Since then, long lines have been seen at supermarkets, pharmacies and everywhere that sells cleaning products, including hand sanitizers. That panic buy buying continued this morning. Our reporter of Vashon Brown is on location in Pembrokehall where residents swarmed a bleach distributor. Uh, Vashon, good afternoon. I'm standing outside Island Products Bulk Chemicals Manufacturing Companies. We were told that it was pretty chaotic out here this morning. There was a traffic pileup. Uh, many persons tried to get sanitization products. We're talking about bleach, uh, rubbing alcohol. This all started from yesterday when the first case of COVID-19 was announced uh, in Jamaica. Now, I am joined by Mrs. Martin, who is the owner of uh, the company. First of all, Ms. Martin, when you came here this morning, just about how many people were here? About 50 persons were already here this morning when we came, waiting to go in. We opened at 8 o'clock, and of course, since then, it has just been steady, steady, steady throughout the day. As you can see, the crowds, I mean, it's outside, and, you know, it has really, really been overwhelming. I've had to close one of the departments and send all the staff here just to manage the crowd that we have encountered today. What departments have you had to close off? Uh, well, we have a powder, the, um, powder soaps and Oxymaster. We are the manufacturer of Oxymaster. So we have had to close that department today just to um, satisfy the crowd. One of the things we've heard is that some companies have had to put in place some sort of restrictions in terms of what consumers can get. Have you had to put in place any sort of restrictions? Well, the only product that we have put restriction on is rubbing alcohol. Because, um, of course, everybody wants a lot, but we want to ensure that at least two gallons, each customer that comes through our door can get at least two gallons of rubbing alcohol, which, of course, is 90% and just as effective as the hand sanitizer. What of the other products? We have everything. We are lucky enough to have full supplies of antibacterial hand soap, all the sanitizing products that you can possibly need, bleach we have from our industrial strength bleach to our consumer brand, everything else fortunately for us we have enough raw material to satisfy any demand for the next three months. All right, thank you very much. That was Mrs. Martin. She is uh, one of the owners of Island Products Bulk Chemicals uh, Manufacturing Company. We'll continue to monitor the situation here in Pembroke Hall. Now, this, of course, is against the background of the authorities telling people not to panic buy. We still see that many persons are coming to these facilities to get their sanitization products. It's back to you. Vashon Brown, thank you. Licenses for various entertainment events in the capital are now under review. In the aftermath of the confirmed COVID-19 case in Jamaica, Kingston's Mayor Delroy Williams said he will meet with promoters to outline the way forward. There are many issues that we have to contemplate and have under review as a municipality. For example, we, we issue entertainment license, amusement licenses for, for various kinds of events. Those are under review. And, uh, we are constantly in dialogue with the Ministry of Health and with other public agencies on how to treat with these, but we, they are constantly under review and as soon as we have made a decision, we will make those decisions known. Mayor Williams says he will make the best decision in the interest of the public. Organizers of carnival events say they remain optimistic that their events will not be affected by the COVID-19 confirmation in Jamaica. The World Health Organization has been discouraging the public gathering as it encourages countries to slow down the spread of COVID-19. Operations at Rayon Neville's Spanish Town Road facility have been suspended after a contractor with a company came in contact with a patient who tested positive for the coronavirus. The Rayon Neville contractor is now in quarantine. In a statement this morning, Rayon Neville said the contractor will be tested and monitored by the Ministry of Health. The company says it's ongoing dialogue with government officials to assess and track the situation. The company says all staff who are able to work remotely have been asked to do so. In other news, Extranet Limited, the company which acquired the assets of telecoms firm Carousel, 
is suggesting that action will be taken against the police for the recent raid on its compound in St. Andrew and the seizure of documents and equipment. The company is complaining that it suffered damage to the equipment as well as significant loss of reputation, losses to its employees, potential loss of clients and potential losses to subscribers because of the raid and subsequent outage from its network. Extranet released a statement yesterday, hours after an order from the Supreme Court for the police to return its equipment, which were seized during the February 21 raid. One of its attorneys, Michael Williams, told TVJ News that the order is with immediate effect. She refused an application by the Director of State Proceedings, who appeared on behalf of the Attorney General and Superintendent Anthony McLaughlin, to have a stay of execution of her order. She also allowed an appeal. The Director of State Proceedings applied for a stay of execution pending appeal, and the judge refused it. The police disclosed that the operation at Carousel was in relation to breaches of the Telecommunications Act. We take a break now on Midday News. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Continuing the news, we're going back to the corona issue. Persons have also been buying and wearing masks. But even as they seek to use these devices to protect themselves from contracting the coronavirus, there's a warning that this may be doing more harm than good. Medical Office of Health at the Princess Margaret Hospital in St. Thomas, Dr. Doyen Smith, addressed the issue during a recent post-sensitization session with residents in Yalas. Because you have one of the gloves, you're not washing. So you touch a dirty surface and then you touch a clean surface, but you're not concerned about you. But then you're transferring the germs all over the place. So what we would recommend for persons is not so much gloves, but regular hand washing. Regular hand washing. When it comes to the masks, the government again, and of course health overall, is not encouraging masks for the entire population. The mask is if it is that you're having a cold, and you'd want to stop all of this mucus from spraying out. Remember the picture that I showed? So the mask is beneficial in that sense that that person has on the mask. So the furthest that that mucus can go is right. The session was to focus on the dengue fever and COVID-19 coronavirus, but COVID-19 was the main focus. Dr. Smith explained that more information is needed. This is a new virus and it's really difficult to get all information on it. So the information will be coming in, and as soon as it comes, it is shared. He also warned residents who must travel to be vigilant. I want to say to everybody, stay away from anybody that you see coughing. You don't know, it could just be the common flu, because we have flu going around now, regular flu going around. But the thing is, always err on the side of safety. So the further away you are from the person, is the less likely those droplets that mucus will get to you. Jamaica's debt to GDP ratio, that's the gross domestic product, has decreased. The declaration came from Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark while speaking on TVJ Smile Jamaica this morning. Dr. Clark explained that the reduction in debt is due to policies implemented by the government. We've been, been able to raise that money through our policy choices of listing companies on the Jamaica Stock Exchange and using those proceeds for debt repayment, as well as reintegrating public bodies into their parent ministries. What we had for decades was public bodies just proliferating, growing in number, accumulating balances and resources that you know were used to, well, <laughs> let's just say, accumulating balances and resources while the people of Jamaica are saddled under the weight mm -hmm. of high debt. Our policy has been to bring those public bodies back in. He added that the country was able to pay back $73 billion of debt for this financial year. Having done that, we bring our debt to GDP ratio down by a, a further 3.3 points and we're forecasted to be uh, below 84% uh, by the end of uh, the upcoming financial year. You remember we were at 145 mm -hmm. a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And that acceleration in debt payment 
gives us the fiscal space to reduce the primary balance, i.e. to reduce the amount of fiscal savings that we need in the year to apply towards debt. Dr. Clark also noted that the reduction has allowed the government to finance $18 billion of tax cuts, which includes the reduction in the standard rate of the general consumption tax, the GCT. In the meantime, the finance minister said the education sector is the largest increase in the budget. Dr. Clark noted that the increase represents a 22% non-debt expenditure. The allocation outside the education ministry is valid at $117 billion. Uh, six or seven years ago, we spent twice as much on interest as we did on education. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, as we've been paying our debt down, that ratio has been changing. And I'm look, you know, very soon, we'll be in a position where we'll be spending more on education than on interest. He added that $1.1 billion has been allocated to the primary and sec secondary schools upgrade program to end the shift system in more schools this year. Over the next three years, $14 billion will be allocated to end in the shift system in 54 more schools. As shift system will be no more. And that requires building new classrooms, new laboratory spaces, okay. and new infrastructure at schools so that in one uh, sort of, uh, in one shift, so to speak, you can accommodate all students. As for the Students' Loan Bureau and the repayment process? We know, you know, take into account that people, you know, the adjustment to work life, the initial expenses that you might have, the time it might take you to find that job that you want. We don't need to be under pressure to take a job that you don't want. You mm -hmm. want to be able to wait and to get what you want. So we've extended the time period that you have to start repaying from the six months to 14 months. Okay. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In the next edition of the Health Report, we look at acute kidney injury. As patients, to ask questions, right? Did you did the doctors do my blood test today? Um, did am I making a lot? Am, am I passing urine when I'm having this? Am I am I feeling thirsty? You know, these are questions that you, the patients, should try to be engaged towards um, their their practitioners. That's the Health Report this evening in primetime news. And now for today's healthy living tip. Work with your doctor to manage diabetes and high blood pressure. Take all prescription medicines given as your doctor tells you. And limit alcohol intake. Eat a healthy diet and exercise. We go now to news overseas. Disgraced former movie mogul Harvey Weinstein was sentenced to 23 years this morning. The sentence was handed down after last month's convictions on first-degree criminal sexual assault and third-degree rape. The charges were based on testimony in a New York courtroom by Miriam Haley and Jessica Mann. Weinstein was acquitted of two more serious charges of predatory sexual assault, which could have brought a life sentence. The 67-year-old has been in state custody since the verdict and has had several health issues. In sports, with the first reported case of COVID-19 in Jamaica, a decision on the staging of this year's ISAS, Grace Kennedy Boys and Girls Athletic Championships will be made today. For hours before the announcement of the virus in Jamaica, TVJ Sports caught up with ISA President Keith Wellington on the possibility of the cancellation of champs because of the virus, as well as one Jamaican in Japan was already booked his ticket for the five-day meet. Um, as it relates to boys and girls champs, um, there is a meeting schedule between um, the organizers, the Minister of Sports and the Minister of Education and myself and the main sponsor. I think Grace Kennedy, of course, is the main sponsor where a decision will be taken um, and that decision should be taken within 24 hours. And that was Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton at Tuesday's press conference to announce the first confirmed COVID-19 case in Jamaica. When TVJ Sports caught up with ISA President Keith Wellington a few hours earlier, he noted plans were underway for this year's staging of the ISA Boys and Girls Athletics Championships even with the threat of the COVID-19 coronavirus. But that threat has now moved to reality with the first confirmed case in Jamaica. 
However, it would not have caught Issa by surprise, as Wellington had explained that they began their contingency plans for the virus from last week. On Friday, we met with a specialist um, just to get a full understanding of the virus and how it is trans transmitted and the implications for an event like CHAMP. So we would have had that meeting. We are in the process of putting together a task force that will include various stakeholders, including the, the, the Ministry of Health um, specialists. So we, we are hoping that during the course of this week, we can put together a plan of action in terms of the varying um, eventualities. And while noting that ISSA would be guided by the Ministry of Health, Wellington was not ruling out the staging of the prestigious high school meet. Of course, if CHAMPS is not held, it would be a significant blow for, for us. But um, that is not really important now. Right now, we are more concerned about ensuring that if we do have CHAMPS, then our patrons and students um, will be safe or as safe as we can possibly make them be. Meanwhile, and just a, an update on that story, um, we're told a meeting which will involve Don Webby of Grace Kennedy, the major sponsors of the event, Keith Wellington, the president of ISSA, and Olivia Babsy-Grange, the minister of sport. That meeting, which will be a teleconference, will happen at 1 p.m. in about what, 45 minutes from now. And then we'll hear a decision coming out of that meeting on whether boys and girls championships will be held. And that's the Midday News. I'm Milton Walker. Join us at 7 for Primetime News on behalf of the news, sports and production teams. Good afternoon.